Job, book of Job. I want to talk to you tonight about integrity. Integrity. When I think of the word integrity, I think of structural integrity. Um, last Christmas, you might remember the Opal Tower in Sydney. People suddenly had to leave their homes because it was a building without integrity. Uh, the words they used were thing like, things like compromised, structurally unsafe. The noises they mentioned were things like bang and snap, which you do not want to hear in a high-rise building. Uh, and one uh, official said the she'll be right culture of regulation is part of the problem. Uh, structural integrity. Uh, I came across a definition, more or less. Structural integrity is the ability of an item to hold together under a load including its own weight, without breaking or deforming excessively. I looked up, I won't mention them all, but uh, there's quite a few examples of structural lack of integrity, things that have fallen down. Uh, one was near where my parents lived, uh, called the Narrows Bridge, some years ago. Uh, it, uh, they learned a lot about, um, what did they call it? Resonance. Resonance. Uh, they have pictures of that bridge just twisting and turning till it fell down. Uh, there, was, there was something wrong with its integrity, and they, they learned a lot from that. Cost them a lot of money to learn that lesson. <laughs> the only thing that was killed was a dog. I even have the name of it and everything. But uh, um, when we think of integrity, we, personal integrity, we think of honesty. Honesty. But it has, has to do with even more than that. It has to do with consistency. Uh, being honest all the time. Uh, it, the word actually means to be complete, to be sound, to be entire. In the Bible, the word is used five times. Four times it's word used in the book of Job. And we're going to read a, a fair bit, but um, mainly chapter one. Let's, let's start with chapter one of Job. Well, actually, let me, let me point out a couple of them. Uh, Job chapter two, verse three, uh, where God is, is saying to um, Satan that... Uh, that Job holds fast his integrity in, in Job 2 and verse 3. Uh, the next mention is where Job's wife says, uh, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? <laughs> Curse God and die. And, and then there's a, a, couple of, a couple more later on that, where Job mentions the, the fact of, of integrity. But let's read uh, Job chapter 1. Uh, there's seven things I want us to see in the life of Job, and then we're going to look at uh, some other things. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. The word eschewed means shunned. He shunned evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was seven, seven thousand sheep and three thousand camels, and five hundred yoke of oxen and five hundred she-asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. The Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. 
And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in all this Job sinned not nor charged God foolishly. I find it interesting how different it is sometimes to read a passage of Scripture out loud. <laughs> it affects me emotionally differently than when I just read it to, to myself. What, a, what an account. What a thing to happen to someone. Uh, thing after thing. Uh, one after another. Um, and when you look at Job and the subject of integrity, you, you learn some real lessons. Uh, I'll give you seven things. These are not original with me. Actually, I had some notes. I, I don't even know where I got them. Uh, maybe one of you gave them to me. I don't know. But number one, integrity worships God no matter what the difficulties. In, in verse 20 there, uh, Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. Uh, that, that was the way they, they did it. Listen, God is worthy of worship. No matter what's going on in our lives, God is worthy of worship. Integrity worships God no matter what the difficulties. Number two, integrity does not look for someone else to blame. Verse 22, in all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. How many times do you hear people blaming God for things? That's actually called blasphemy. To blame God for wrong, to, to say God has done wrong, is, is blasphemy. Job did not do that. Job was a man of integrity. Uh, do you remember the the definition they gave structurally is uh, it's able to hold together under a load, including its own weight, without breaking or deforming excessively. And as we go into this lesson you'll see tonight, this integrity doesn't really come from us. It's really resting in the Lord. Let's go on to chapter 2. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause? And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. The Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. He, he that's Job, took him a potsherd to scrape himself withal. And he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In this did not Job sin with his lips. Uh, number three, integrity holds fast no matter how long or frequent the tests. Uh, there in Job chapter 2 and verse 3, uh, towards the end of the verse, he uses the word still. That means continually. You know, things were just, just continually going happening in, in, in his life. But integrity 
holds fast no matter how long or how frequent the tests. In the same verse, integrity remains true even when things seem unfair. You notice the words at the end of that verse, verse 3, without cause. Job hadn't done anything to deserve this. You know, we, we have this way we look at things that when something bad happens, we think, oh, what did I do wrong? What is, you know, what is God punishing me for? Listen, uh, God's not the only one who's in, involved in, in life. Uh, you're involved. Satan's involved. There's a lot of things involved. And uh, integrity uh, remains true even when it seems unfair, without a cause. We, you know, we often say, what have I done to deserve this? You know? uh, well, sometimes it's without a cause. It's just because we live in a sinful world. In Job 2 and verse 9, integrity is revealed when others who lack integrity encourage us to give up. Yeah, I was thinking about that this week. Those would have been some of the hardest words in the Bible right there. His wife says, are you still hanging on to your integrity? Get it over with, man. <laughs> Curse God and die. Uh, integrity is revealed when others encourage us to give up. Listen, be careful who you listen to. Be careful who you listen to. And then in verse 10, integrity is true and honest even when it hurts. He said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. You know, we need to be careful when we're hurt. The tendency is to lash out, isn't it? I witnessed some four-year-old logic this, this week, and I realized a lot of adults have four-year-old logic. Uh, I was saying to someone who will remain unnamed who's four years old, and that uh, she had pushed her sister because her sister had pushed her first. Well, was it wrong for your sister to push you? Yes. Well, then it's wrong for you to push her. No! <laughs> You know, we think because someone has done something to us and maybe we think it's unfair and, and, and we're hurt, the tendency is to lash out and think, I'm, I'm right to lash out. But the integrity is true and honest even when it hurts. The Bible talks about speaking the truth in love. Boy, we need to be careful with, with that. Uh, sometimes we speak the truth and uh, we say it's in love, but it, it needs to be. Uh, the problem with hurt is that it brings out our heart. And integrity is only going to come from the Lord. Well, then finally, integrity is true to God even when the tests keep coming. You know, as we read it there, it just really hit me as just in reading it. Uh, one test after another. Basically, his wealth and his life was taken away all in, in just a few moments. I counted 18 things if you, if you count his 10 children. Eight things plus his 10 children. I mean, you can't say his children is one event. I certainly wouldn't. Um, in Job chapter 13 and, and verse 15, uh, Job's attitude was, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Uh, we're not going to understand everything that goes on uh, in life. It, Paul had learned this same lesson when, when he said, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Uh, we, we learned one of the verses in Philippians 4, um, my mind always goes blank when I try to not that I speak in respect of want for I've learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me see that's where our integrity is going to come from that's where our strength is, is going to come from uh, in the difficulties of life. Integrity is all about learning to worship and honor God. Uh, we need to be people of in integrity. Who knows what we're going to go through? As I thought about this, uh, I thought about my dad. Uh, my, my brother pointed out to me, and m my dad wasn't a perfect man by any means, but uh, my brother pointed out to me that my dad was the same no matter where he was or who he was with. At church, at home, at school. He, he was just the same. What you saw with my dad is what you got. He was a good man. He was a godly man. Uh, he, he had integrity. Um, we, we have a friend named uh, Dennis Fountain, who, formerly a pastor. and uh, Now he, he's been struggling with cancer for about 10 years now. He'll get well, he'll get sick. He'll get well, he'll get sick. And 
the thing I, I've felt about in, in seeing his testimony is it showed his integrity. It hasn't changed his love for the Lord. He, he's cheerful. He's a witness. You know, he talks about witnessing to this person while they're drawing his blood. And <laughs> you think, you know, it, it comes out in, in the hurt of life. Uh, we're seeing it in our missionary, Francois Surrett. You know, you read those, the letters from him, you think, boy, I, I hope I could say that if, if that was me going through there. Um, I saw it in my sister. Oh, she'd been married almost, I think it was just almost 20 years. And they'd gone on a, I've told you this before, they'd gone on a church bike ride. Her husband said to her, I'm going to go on ahead because I don't want to be the last one back. The last words she ever heard him say. Uh, she came to a group of people and he'd had a heart attack and, and died. And I saw in her integrity. She loved the Lord. She continued to be cheerful. Went back to work, raised her teenage boys. Uh, and God blessed her. Uh, and, and you know, the difference for these people is it's not sorrow without hope. Listen, the world doesn't have hope. Or they have hope in the wrong things. Listen, if your hope is in your family or in your health or in your job or, you know, all these things that can go away, that's not hope. We have hope in the Lord. And we can have integrity because we can count on God. I got a book in the, uh, the mail this week. I had sent for it because it's about a person that I uh, went to church with in high school. Uh, he went through a, a situation that I just couldn't imagine. Uh, when, when we first came to Australia, uh, our, our first trip back to the United States was in 1982. And, and while I was there, I think I was even at a preacher's meeting, uh, the word came that um, the, the man's name is Bud Silva, a lovely fellow. And, he, he was a pastor in California at the time. His wife and his three children and six of their church kids uh, were on their, in the church van on their way to school. And a, a, stalled, a car stalled and a truck veered around it and hit them head on and killed them all except his one youngest daughter. Man, can you imagine? He, uh, he said he, he heard about it, and he, he went to the hospital, he went to the morgue, and they said, can you identify these bodies? He said, well, that's my wife. He said, that's my daughter. And he said he, he realized that the man wished he hadn't asked him, because it was just so hard. It was just so hard. And, and you know, as you hear the testimony of someone like that, you think, how can they go through it? Well, they can go through it because they have hope in the Lord. I would encourage you, I'll put it in the church library, I'd, I'd encourage you to take a look at it. When he talks about the things he learned, the first chapter is being thankful. Oh, wow, being thankful. He, he pastored for a few more months, and then he, he just, he went, he moved to his sister's house with his little girl, and, and they just took some time to, to recover themselves. And he said he was, he was coming down the steps one day, and he, 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 the Lord reminded him of the verse, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. He thought, well, I, I guess I, I need to deal with this. I had a decision to make, he said. I knew that if I truly wanted to be right with God, I'd need to be thankful for all that had happened. Was I truly thankful? I reasoned in my heart about telling the Lord thank you, and I knew if I said thank you and didn't mean it, the Lord would know. I couldn't fool God. Finally, he said, Lord, I want to thank you for all that's taken place in my life. And I meant, I meant what I said that day. And being thankful at that moment led to great freedom in my spirit as I faced myself and my negligence of thanking God. You know, integrity, integrity is thankful, you know, like Job, like Mr. Silva, even in the most difficult of times. He said he learned the reality of heaven. He learned the love of God. He learned forgiveness. You know, there was other people involved in that, that accident. He learned friendship. And you know, uh, he could see the hand of God. You know, there are things in life we can't change. There's just some things in life we can't change. Some of them are things like who our parents are, what we look like, our heritage, you know. But then there's other things that happen, and we just can't change them. And God says, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 
We need to trust the Lord. Whatever happens. The, the only other place that the word integrity comes up in the Bible is Proverbs 11.3. Let me read that to you. I, th I think the Lord shows us the contrast here of what we do when trouble comes. Proverbs 11.3. Uh, I guess I didn't read the others there in, in Job, but uh, while, while you're turning to there, let me read those from, from Job. In Job 27.5, uh, he had said, God forbid that I should justify you till I die. I will not remove mine integrity from me. <laughs> yeah. The expression, miserable comforters are you all, comes from the book of Job. Uh, these guys come and, and give him a hard time about his situation. Proverbs 31, verse 6, he said, Let me be weighed in an even balance that God may know mine integrity. He says, I, I, want, I want to know, uh, you know what God says about this. Well, the, the other verse there in Proverbs 11, verse 3, he says, The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. As I read that, I realized, here's a contrast. It, it, we can have integrity or we can have perverseness. Um, perverseness means crookedness. Now, you can, you can choose to be conformed to God and he's right, or you can be crooked. You can be perverse. And a lot of people choose that path. How could God let this happen to me? Why did, and they, maybe they won't focus on God, but they make, they'll focus on a person, or they'll focus on their misery. Folks, we need integrity, and it needs to come from God. We need to be people who have hope. We're going to sorrow. Listen, uh, life has its sorrows. But we don't have to sorrow like those who have no hope. And it really blessed my heart to see this verse. The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. Job asked in Job 17, Where is now my hope? As for my hope, who shall see it? The psalmist asked, Why art thou cast down on my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? And then he answered his own question. Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Folks, we can know, no matter what's happening, that God is at work. Uh, there's another famous uh, quotation from, uh, from the book of Job. Job chapter 23 and, and verse 10. I started to read it from Proverbs, but it just doesn't sound the same there. He knoweth the way that I take when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. What a blessed statement. You see, God has a purpose. God, we need to understand, God is always good. We may not see it at the time. God is always good. And, you know, when you, when you think about things, this life is not the point. It's not just how much money we have or how comfortable we are or... You know, there's hundreds of things you could mention, aren't there? It's about eternity. It's about eternity. And we need to see that. Uh, turn with me, if you would, uh, one more passage. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. In verse 3, he talks about the the hope we have because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. As Christians, we have hope. In verse 4, he talks about the inheritance we have. It's incorruptible, undefiled, fadeth not away, reserved in heaven. for We, we have the riches of God as our inheritance. In verse 5, he says, we have salvation. We're kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. But I wanted to bring you to verses 6 through 8. Look at verse 6. Wherein you greatly rejoice. You know, we look back at those things. What a blessing. We have hope. We have an inheritance. We have salvation. But listen, there's a comma there. He says, Though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen, you love. 
in whom though now you see him not yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. And what a blessing uh, that we have hope, that we can have integrity because of him. You know, it uses the word there, temptations, or, or trials, I, I should say. I looked up a, a definition of that, of temptations. Where, where was that? Uh, verse number six. Yeah, manifold temptations. The definition they gave was the trial of man's fidelity, integrity. The trial of our integrity, virtue, constancy. Those will come. And sometimes when the trials come, we'll see our lack of integrity. And we'll have to humble ourselves before the Lord and say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Sometimes we'll have to apologize to somebody. <laughs> somebody else other than the Lord. Uh, because of our lack of integrity. But our goal is to be like Jesus. Uh, someday, all of this will make sense. Uh, I'll admit to you, uh, there's things that happen and it doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> I don't understand it, but God does. And he gives us this promise. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. What a blessing. What hope we have. You know, like Job, we need to be able to say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Integrity. Now, there's so much we could, we could say about it. But we know it was perfect in the Lord Jesus. And he bore our sins. And he gives us the, the gift of salvation and eternal life. Let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Maybe there's just some things you need to talk to the Lord about in regard to this, this message tonight. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the examples of those who've gone before. And Lord, I know each one of us goes through difficulties. and Help us, Father, to trust you. Help us to have at least a, an idea that and understanding that you have a good purpose. And Lord, that you have our hope laid up before us in heaven. Lord, I pray if there should be any here tonight that are not saved, that they would leave behind their own hopes and take you as their hope. Father, I know many of our folks are going through difficulties, uh, many different kinds. And Lord, our, our trust is in you. Our hope is in you. And Father, we're, we're helpless without you. Thank you that we can know that you'd never lie to us and that you're always good, and that you're righteous and just. Thank you, Lord, for uh, the integrity that you can build in our lives. Thank you that you are, uh, we can trust you for our soul's salvation and know that it will never be uh, a lie. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.